All right, 21.2, solving equations by factoring. Okay, what's well changed? A, x squared plus bx plus c. So now this a is not a one. Complicates the problem a little bit. However, you can still do it relatively simply depending on how well you can multiply, if you can do it mentally or if you need to list it. So I'm gonna show you a method that works all the time. You can do it either by doing factors, using your Punnett square, whatever. Uh, but we're gonna kinda let them do the example here, doing the foil, doing the mental math and all that kind of stuff. What I'm going to do is try to walk you through, which may be slightly different than theirs. And they talk about the different scenarios when A or when C is less than zero. So in other words, this is a negative. If that's a negative, what did we say? If that's a negative, then that means we are subtracting. I can't write. And when do we subtract? When our signs are different. So an example here. So they've given you one here where they've listed all the factors. The first thing they've done is they've taken out a common factor of 23, or of three, sorry, not 23. Now that's important, why? Because it simplifies our quadratic that we have to factor. Next, it's factors that give us a uh, sum technically difference because this again is a negative right here of negative seven. So how do we do that? Well, the good thing is when we're gonna factor it, so we have our common factor of three outside, we know we're gonna have two binomial factors. To get a factor of two x squared, I know I have to multiply two x times x. That's the only factors there are. So then what I try is, some people call this trial and error method. I've got to figure out what goes here. So I need factors that give me 15. What are they? Well, it could be 1 and 15. So I could try 1 and 15 and then do the FOIL or mental math in my head. So I do my outer. That would be 30x. My inner would be 1x. I'm subtracting to try to get negative 7 and that doesn't work, okay? So then what do I do? I go backwards. So if one and 15 doesn't work, then I try 15 and one. Outer, that would give me two X. Inner, that would give me 15 X. If I subtract, then that gives me 13 X, which is still not my middle term here. So then what do I do? I go backwards again. Sorry. And now I try doing some different terms here. I don't know why I keep pointing all those out. So here I go again. So I've got 2x. I've got x. So 1 and 15 didn't work. So what are the next factors of 1 and, or 15? 3 and 5. So I try 3. I try 5. That gives me 10x, that gives me 3x. Now, subtracting those, that does give me my 7x, which I need. I need it to be a negative seven. So how does that happen? That has to be negative, that has to be positive. So that means my three here is positive, since that gives me my positive 3x. That's a negative, since that gives me my negative 10x. Now, that's what's trial and error method. It works relatively easily if you can do the mental math because again, the only factors of 2x squared are 2x and x. There is a longer method to do this. So how does that work? Let me try to show you here real quickly. So again, I have the three factored out. I have 2x squared minus 7x minus 15. This works all the time. Multiply. Your 2 times negative 15 is negative 30. 
list your factors of negative 30, okay? So you have 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10. Now I'll stop at 3 and 10. Why? Because those give me negative 7. The 10 is negative. The 3 is positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that negative 7x with these two factors. So now this becomes 3 on the outside times 2x squared plus 3x. I'm going to have to erase some stuff here. Minus 10x minus 15. Now what I do is I group. I group the first two together, the second two. Now I look in the first group. Still have that 3 as a factor. In the first group, what do these have in common? They both have an x. So I can take an x out. What's that leave inside? A 2x plus a 3. I take the second group. What do they have in common? What will go into 10 and 15? Well, 5 will. I always pay attention to my sign here. So I take out a negative 5. What's that leave? A 2x. Not a negative, but now a positive 3, because if I redistribute, that's what would give me negative 15. Now what you notice here are these two groups are exactly the same, which is what you want to happen. So now I have my 3 on the outside. I have my common group of 2x plus 3. Then what do I do? I take what I have left on the outside, and I group it together, x minus 5. Just another way to do it. So what we're going to do is they give another example. You can go through it the way they do. I'm perfectly fine with that. But I'm going to do the your turn problem here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something very similar to what I just did. Then I'm going to show you how maybe you could use Punnett squares. So in this case, again, I'm going to multiply my a times my c. That gives me negative 20. So I'm going to list factors that are going to give me 8. So 1 and 20 doesn't work. 2 and 10 will give me 8. I need a positive 8, so that's a positive 10 and a negative 2. So I'm replacing this middle term with a negative 2x and a positive 10x, because that's what gives me a positive 8x. So now I have negative 5x squared minus 2x plus 10x plus 4. Now I group them, group the first two, group the second two. What do the first two have in common? They both have an x. So I take that x out, and what am I left with? Negative 5x minus 2. I take the second group. What do they have in common? What will go into 10 and the 4? Well, 2 will. So I take out a positive 2. What's that leave? 5x plus 2. So you notice something here. These are the same except for the fact that one's positive, the other's negative. So they have to be exactly the same. So what do I do here? I'm going to take that negative sign out front which now makes this a positive and a positive, because if I redistributed, there would be the negative sign. So taking that negative out now makes these two groups exactly the same. So I'll bring that out, 5x plus 2, and then I group what I took out, which was a negative x plus 2. So now that's completely factored. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do it using a Punnett square, which is similar to kind of the trial and error method. So I make my square, and I know my first term here has to be negative 5x squared. So what will give me that? 5x and a negative x, or I could flip-flop them. doesn't matter. This has to be a positive 4. Because that's a positive, typically what that would mean is that my signs are the same. But because this first term here was a negative, 
then my signs are different. So one has to be a plus, the other has to be a minus. So I think what will give me 8x here, and that's going to be 10x and negative 2x. Now, how do I know it's those numbers? Well, again, you've got to get factors of 4. What are the factors of 4? I could do 2 and 2. So what did that do? 5x times 2 gave me 10x. 2 times negative x gave me negative 2x. Combine, what's that give me? And 8x. So it's still kind of the trial and error method. It's just done in a more visual way. So then they do it down here where uh, it's an equation. So you're still factoring, setting equal to zero, finding your factors, all that kind of stuff. And you can still do this on the calculator. Sometimes you're going to get decimal answers on the calculator. That's what it will give you. If you do it in factored form, you're going to get a fraction. And I'll show how here in this example. So again, they give you another one to look at that you can go through. And I'm going to go to the year term problem. So I'm going to do this one. And again, I'm going to try to show you some different ways to do this. And you're just going to have to figure out kind of what works for you. But first thing I always do is I look for, and you've probably heard this before, GCF, greatest common factor. What will go into all of these? Well, 2 won't because 45 is an odd number. But 3 will. 3 goes into all of them. So I take that 3 out. 3 goes into that. 4x squared plus 3 goes into 48, 16. 3 goes into 45, 15. Now, before I go on, I always go ahead and look my quadratic again and think, is there another common factor? Well, in this case, there's not. So then I'm trying to actually factor this. Well, the 3 is already factored out, so I'm done with that. That's already on the outside. I just have to keep bringing it with the problem. What I need to do now is I need to factor the quadratic. So again, what I'm going to do is show you the method that works all the time. What's well, 4 times 15? That's a positive 60. Because it's positive, you add. So I start listing the factors of 60. 1 and 60 doesn't work. 2 and 30 doesn't work. 3 and 20 doesn't work. Uh, 4 and 15 doesn't work. 5 and 12 doesn't work. 6 and 10, boom, that works. Why? That gives me my 16. So I have a positive 6x and a positive 10x. So now what happens? I rewrite, again, just bring that 3 down. I rewrite this as 4x squared plus 6x plus 10x plus 15. Now all that equals 0, and we'll come back to that. So what I do, I group the first two, group the second two. Again, bring that 3 down. What does the first group have in common? They both have an x, but they also have a 2. 2 will go into it. So I have a 2x. What's that leave? 2x plus 3. Now how does that work? What's 2 times 2? 4. What's x times x? x squared. What's 2 times 3? 6. And then you have your x. So that's how that works. Again, just taking out what is called a GCF, greatest common factor. Your second group, pay attention to your sign, take out a positive. What goes into 10 into 15? 5 does. 5 times 2 gives you the 10. So 2x plus 5 times 3 gives you the 15. So again, what has to happen? Those two groups have to be exactly the same. They are. What I do with the 3, I still bring it down. I now take the common group, 2x plus 3, write it down. And what do I do for the second? I take what I took out and group that together, 2x plus 5. Now again, all this was equal to 0. So now I can find my solutions or roots. I have to set that equal to 0 and solve. So subtract 3. And then you're going to, what, divide by 2. So you divide by 2. I'm running out of room here. Divide by 2. Those cancel. So you get x is negative 3 halves. 
And there again, if you did it on the calculator, the calculator would say negative 1.5. The shortcut, and we did this in the other module, you can always think, do the opposite. What's the opposite of plus 5? Subtract 5. What's the opposite of multiply by 2? Divide by 2. And there's your other root. And again, if you did this on the calculator, it would say negative 2.5. So one thing to note, the calculator, when it solves, is going to do decimal answers. When you do factoring, you're going to get some fractional answers. Now, again, there are other methods to do this, so real, as quickly as I can, I know it's not very fast, I'm going to try to show you using the Punnett square. So with the Punnett square, again, this is trial and error, always try to take your GCF out first. So again, we take the 3 out. I left 4x squared plus 16x plus 15. So you have your Punnett square here. And you know right here you have to get 4x squared, and here you have to get a positive 15. Again, since that's positive, you're adding. So you need factor factors of... Not 15, but again, you got to do the product here, 4 and 15 factors of 60. That will add to give you 16. So you go through and think, okay, what are factors of 16? You list all those, but you get 6x and 10x. So now you have basically the same setup as before. It's just in a bit more visual um, type organization I guess so then think about okay what can I multiply to get 15 now why would I start with 15 because it's either 1 and 15 or 3 and 5 so I'm gonna start with 3 and 5 so then you think about what can you multiply to get 4x squared well it could be x and 4x but it could also be 2x and 2x so then you try get 4x squared. Then you do 2 times 5 is 10x. 3 times 2 is 6x. And then there you go. There are your two factors now. So again, it's the same basic principle. It's just a different way of organizing your information. So in modeling, you have a specific function that you need to use when you're talking about height. h equals negative 16t squared plus vt plus s. Okay, what does V stand for? V stands for your initial velocity or speed. It's important to know whether it's going up or down. If it's up, it's a positive. If it's going down, it's a negative. What is S? S is your initial height or your starting point. Okay, so like your y-intercept that we talk about. So they give you an example here that you can look and see how they've worked through it. We're going to go to the next example, again, that they give you. You can do fill in the blank and all that, but we're going to go to the your term problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write that basic equation, h equals negative 16 t squared plus vt plus s. And what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to identify the values from the given problem. How long does it take a rock to hit the ground? That's important. That means I'm looking for a height that's equal to zero. If thrown off the edge of a 72-foot tall building roof, that's my starting point, my initial height, with an upward velocity of 24 feet per second. So I've got a height of zero, negative 16 t squared plus 24 t plus because again that was an upward velocity plus 72 because my initial height was 72 so now I'm going to try to solve by factoring now again you could do this on the calculator give you decimal values but let's try to do it by factoring so the first thing I do is I look and say okay what will go into all these I always try to make my squared term positive. Now, we did one earlier where this was a negative, but if you can make it positive, it makes the problem a little easier. So what will go into 16, 24, and 72? Well, I know 8 will, but I'm going to take out a negative 8. 
So that leaves 2t squared. Now, sorry, need to change that. Minus 3t minus 9. Now, why did those change to minuses? Because I took out that negative right here. So now I have my GCF out, the negative 8. Now I need to factor this quadratic. The good thing is, in this case, I'm going to do trial and error because 2t squared only has two factors, 2t and t. So then I need to figure out the factors of 9. Well, there's only 1 and 9 and 3 and 3, so we do trial and error. We need a difference of negative 3. So I'm going to try uh, 3 and 3. Now do your FOIL, your outer, that's 6x, or 6t, that's 3t. So if I have 6t and 3t, what's that give me? If I subtract, again right here, subtract, that gives me 3t. I need to be a negative 3t, so that means the one that gave me 6 needs to be negative. The one that gave me 3 is positive. So those are now my factors, negative 8 equals 0. Now I find my solutions. This cannot be a solution because it doesn't have a variable. We talked about that earlier in module 20. What would this one be? T would be do the opposite of 3, divide by 2. Well, that doesn't work because what is T here? Time. Can't have a negative time. What would T be here? Positive 3. What's it measured in? Go back into your problem. Measured in seconds. So after 3 seconds, the rock will hit the ground. So, you are doing on page 1004 numbers 1 through 23 odd and number 24.